Hello everybody and welcome to Start It Up! Start It Up is that business show with the startup generation that's done in a fun and wacky kind of way. Um, see, every week we sort of joke about a startup and um, I think we should totally stop it because it's not funny, man. No, 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 we want one last joke. It's, one I'm telling you, it's not funny, okay? That's why they call it serious business. Okay, fine, because you asked. So, um, you know you're a startup when you're going uh, rock climbing and then when you're like jumping down like that, you're calling it upselling. You know, because it's abseiling, but upsell, abseil. No, come on, hey guys, please. Don't go away, interview's coming up right after this. So this episode is going to be a bit different. Um, we usually talk to startups, but today we're going to be talking to a foundation that supports startups. We'll be talking to the new Entrepreneurs Foundation, or known as Minas. Please welcome the chairman, Ashran Datuk Ghazi. Please put applause. Hi, guys. I'm okay. I'm okay. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. Yep. How's things at Minas right now? Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. What's the latest uh, juicy stuff going on? Um, well, uh, if you've known, we recently launched uh, Rice Bowl Startup Awards. Yes. Um, so that, that was, that's pretty awesome. We're now at the, uh, we're about to close nominations uh, for that. Uh, we're excited naturally this year. We did the first one last, end of last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, early this year, we forged a partnership with Global Startup Awards. Okay. So we've upped the ante a little bit. Um, now, winners of Rice Bowl within the ASEAN region is going to compete at the global level also. Wow, yeah, that's yeah. good. So it's, it's really, yes, up the ante. Yes, what, yes, what, yes. What, what criteria do you need to fulfill to get into this Rice Bowl? Um, well, uh, for this year, we actually differentiated a little bit. So last year was very, we had about 10, 11 categories, and uh, it was all very startup centric. Okay. Um, this year, with the partnership with Global Startup Awards, um, we're actually, so the theme last year was celebrating rising startups. Right. For this year, it's going to be celebrating the entrepreneurship ecosystem. Okay. So it's not just startups. We have categories for best professional investor. We've got categories for best uh, 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 ecosystem enablers, um, including some of the startup components. So, because uh, the place that is supporting the various startups are sometimes not recognized. That's right. Um, and we want to give that platform uh, essentially for it. Well, fantastic. Yeah. Well, most times, investors don't like to be recognized very hush hush. You know? <laughs> no, no, the best professional investor. Oh, oh yes, of course, professional <laughs> VCs, VCs. Yes, yes, VCs and those kind of lots. Uh, so they want to be able to position themselves also as uh, a leader within the market. Based on what you're seeing within the landscape in Malaysia right now, what's what's the trend? What's coming out? What are people are uh, innovating more? Um, well, um, if you look at generally the the younger uh, generation, a lot of the business ideas are coming from a very tech oriented. Uh, uh, tools yeah. or services for that for that matter um, and you've got another segment that's actually um, traditional guys and they're trying to figure out ways to to have a better service delivery in terms mm -hmm. of what they're offering and another area that is really up and coming also is uh, social entrepreneurship right. um, that seems to be quite a bit of a buzz and also especially within the younger generation yeah so let's let's discuss social entrepreneurship sure. a bit. I mean like what uh, what are the criteria? I think a lot of people are quite mis uh, misconstrued when they understand social entrepreneurship. Right, 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 is right. it tech? Is it not? You know, are we actually a startup? Um, well, the fundamental idea of social entrepreneurship is uh, at the core, you're actually trying to help a particular market segment that is underserved or a particular cause. And normally when you talk about guys within that space, they're either trying to help um, uh, 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 a poor uh, group of people, um, single mothers, uh, or if you talk about issues, you're talking about environmental issues, um, uh, eco stuff, uh, and all those things essentially. Poverty issues and, 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 and stuff. But um, what people misconstrued and why the whole idea of social entrepreneurship is, um, you're trying to run away from it being too charity driven. Right. right? So the whole idea of social entrepreneurship is that if you're trying to impact a particular community, can you devise a business model around it? Uh, and what people also sometimes misconstrued is that um, when you devise a business model, it's got to be directly correlated. Uh, and so what I mean by that is if you're trying to, um, and there are social enterprises uh, out there that works this way, 
Uh, we're trying to address and, and help uh, single mothers within a particular community, for instance. Um, a way of doing, uh, uh, helping them, short of you know trying to go and, and you know beg for sponsorships and stuff, which can be a very painful exercise mm -hmm. uh, for it. Um, you actually could be devising a business in say fashion, right. and where you source uh, talents and skill sets uh, from this particular community. So as this is going out to make money, um, you're actually directly helping this particular market segment. What tends to happen before this is that you know you go to some foundation or <laughs> corporates and say, hey, you know what, we want to help this uh, a group of single mothers, for instance, um, and we want to train them to do this and this and that. Uh, they would normally ask for um, sponsorships or uh, uh, to be able to sustain that. Right. So the, the the area of social entrepreneurship essentially kind of encapsulates that, and you know have a you have a business driver that is actually going out to do business, your typical business, but the spirit of it. It's not so much to maximize profit per se, right. um, and it all falls under fair trade also. So, if you talk to a typical businessman who's like, you know, I've got to make sure that I got my Ferrari year end and stuff. When you outsource to say single mothers, yeah. you probably go and press cow cow uh, <laughs> pressing, right? Yeah. I want to say ten ringgit. I outsource one ringgit. That's it. That's all I, I give it. you. <laughs> I get it. But yeah. when you have uh, a social entrepreneurship uh, spirit, your primary goal is I need to help this group. Yes. Right. So when you negotiate pricing, um, you are always very clear that you know, if I make 30% uh, a margin, I know I can sustain my operations. That's right. So you make sure that when you deal with your outsourced partners or the single mothers in the example, um, you're not so much trying to press to be able to make maximum profit. Uh, you're trying to settle for uh, Audi, lah. Uh, um, uh, Audi, uh, maybe uh, a bit more, <laughs> <laughs> bit too atas, no? <laughs> So that's that's the core. That's the core. Understood. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.